I would rather not know what I want. It sounds ridiculous and so many coaches are going to tell you that from another way. It's like, well, you know, if you don't know where you're going, you're never going to get there. But I'm going to go with something deeper. We're going into the subconscious today. Because I have so many, so many times I have these questions with people asking, hey, what do you want? And they sometimes, and I feel that energetic misalignment sometimes when they do say what they want, but I'm like, oh, no, their energy is not there at all. But at the root cause of it, so many of us are actually terrified of admitting what we truly, really want. Not what society tells you what you want, not your parents, not your peer group, not your you know, early caregivers, not your siblings. But what do you really want? And that is actually a terrifying thing for your thinking mind, for your ego to step into. And I'm going to explain why and how do we move past this. So let's dive right in. Welcome to today's video. Let us begin by taking a deep inhale in because we're uncovering some deep stuff today. Some things that your ego doesn't want you to know. The thinking mind does not want you to access this information. So let us begin by calming it, by coming into the present moment, by tuning into the breath as you're inhaling in. Belly, chest, nose, breathing deeply. Hold. And exhaling out through the mouth very slowly. And hold again. And again in. Hold. Exhaling out through the mouth, letting it go. And hold again. And now again in, last round, give it all you've got. Inhaling in, belly, chest, nose. Hold, becoming aware of your body, feeling gravity hold you, exhaling out through the mouth slowly, and hold again. Okay, now breathing regularly, feeling yourself heavy on that which you are sitting on, feeling maybe your feet on the earth, feeling your connection to this moment, tuning into your hands, what what are you feeling, right? Your hands may be on your lap, you're feeling the fabric, maybe your hands are together, you're feeling your skin. Just noticing, what do you feel? Because we're, what we're addressing today really needs a lot of awareness and presence. There's so many reasons why people don't live the life that they want to live. Why we self-sabotage, why we have that um, upper limit. It's something that uh, Gay Hendricks addressed in his book, the, the Big Leap, I believe it was. Why don't we get what we want? And I made several videos on this channel around this topic and you can definitely, you know, look, look that up. But I want to go even earlier than that. I have so many clarity calls with people, just see if we're a match, uh, people want to work with me one-on-one -on -one or they want to join one of the programs or they just want clarity and like, what are my next steps? And the question that I begin with, that I often start with is, what do you really want and tuning into that? And so many people don't know. Or because I read energy and this is why I can so efficiently work with clients and you know allow them to have that transformation in three months because I feel energy. And so sometimes they tell me that they want one thing and energetically I'm feeling that's completely off. Like, no, they don't. Or they're scared of it or like they're, they're not there. The energy's completely misaligned. And oftentimes people go into, I don't know what I want. And this is what I want to address today. Why not? I know for myself, and I'm going to get a bit personal here but and authentic, but I feel like this needs to be shared because so many people face this. When we're on the go, 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 especially when we feel like we've checked those boxes, right? Let's say the family or the job or travel or experiences or whatever your personal boxes are, and you feel like you've checked them. There's this, I don't know what else to do. There is this, 
I don't want to even tune in to what I want because what if I can't have it? And this is such a deep one, such a subtle one. And the mind will get you into those hamster wheels, into those rat races. Let's do more and more. Let's create more and more. Let's keep ourselves occupied. And I had this with so many clients and so many you know, people who wanted to work with me because we have those calls to really see if we're in alignment. Um, and they were just not there. They, they wanted to keep chasing that dangling carrot that the ego provides. I'll be happy when. And I mean, you know, so many coaches, teachers, they actually, they make money off of that, right? It's like, here's one more course so you can be better or here's one more tool. And it's this never ending, okay, I'm busy, busy, busy doing something, never actually tuning into your heart, to your soul, coming into what is it that I really want. And this is actually something that we do in the Powerful Self Membership uh, monthly, or rather every three months we have a soul inquiry session where the desires, the goals, the targets don't come from the mind. They come from a subconscious state connecting to your essence. And receiving guidance from that, co-creating with life. But here's what I really, really, really want to emphasize. Bring this to light. Is there a part of you that doesn't want to know what it wants? So as I began saying, a personal experience. When I started working with my spiritual mentors... Um, we had this exercise of having to do, uh, to write things out, some of the things you want. And my mind would go into this massive spiritual bypass. It's really humorous now that I think back about it. Because I was so certain that it's a real thing. Uh, and I would say, well, that's judgment. Because one experience is not better than the other. Like, who's to say that being homeless is worse than living in a huge house? They both have their pros and cons. There's so many people, you know, millionaires living in huge houses and they're miserable. And there's some people that, you know, don't have a home and sure things are tough sometimes, but they're, they're actually happy and they feel free. Um, I actually know some people that are like that and, you know, they're like, I like that I have no attachment and I'm, I'm yeah, I feel that freedom. And so who's to say what's better or worse? And my teacher try to kind of point me in the direction of, okay, but it's also safe to have a preference. And my ego would be all spiritual and say, no, it's not because it's judgment. And, you know, being enlightened or wise is not having that judgment. And what it really was, as I saw over the few months after that, definitely years after that, was that it was all bypass. I saw myself in um, accountability groups with my close people having so much trouble to vocalize what I truly wanted, what my heart yearned for. Because I was afraid to get disappointed. I didn't want to say it. What if I fail at it? And oftentimes that's the trap the ego will take you to. I don't want to say what I want because what if I can have it? That's kind of the second part. The first part is, you know, I don't want what I want because what if I can't have it? But then you really realize that it's what I don't want to know what I want because what if I can? And there's so many different layers to that. And again, this is something that I do. I want to one work if you want to go dive deeper into this, but We go into this, right, no, I'm happy or I'm content just the way it is or, you know, well, other people have a lot worse than me. That's one of my favorites. People use that for bypass quite often. Um, And then we go into, okay, well, let's say I'm allowed to want, want or get curious about what I want. And then we're afraid to name it because, well, I don't want to, you know, put all my eggs in this basket. What if I did get disappointed? What if life isn't there to support me? And then when we allow ourselves to go there, so much forgiveness has to be done around this part of us that felt like 
we're not worthy of having what we want because there's a moment and everybody's spiritual path when you're like, oh my God, life's got me and I can manifest my reality and it's freaking amazing. And then goes, the ego comes in, wait a second. What about all these years? What about all these hardships? So I created that. And so much self-forgiveness being done and so much self-love and coming into wholeness because so many people go into like, oh, that's an old part of me and I want to let go of that. Actually, in the Powerful Self Membership Library, we have a practice of how to let go of the old self in a kind of welcoming that part back, um, loving it, appreciating it. And then there's a ritual of how to um, transition with that part being a part of you, not separate, but being a part of you because it's part of your journey. And so a lot of people kind of go into, okay, well, that's an old part of me. I don't want that. And we get to do that. We get to come into that love of, okay, there was a part of me that manifested crap for years and I can love that. And forgiveness around, wow, it's safe for me to know what I want. Because so many people go into, I would rather not know what I want. Because what if it's too hard? What if I don't have what it takes to accomplish it? And oh my God, what if I can actually have it? So on this note, I would love to hear in the comments below because this is a deep one. What are you hearing me say? What resonated for you? How does this relate to your individual journey? Because when we bring these things to awareness, especially when we write it down, there's so much research around journaling. There's so much research about, you know, different part of your brain is active when you write it with your, when you actually write by hand. Um, so many, like when you journal, you bring things to awareness. You feel lighter. It's so good for your mental, emotional health. So much research. So just bring this to awareness. What are you hearing me say? What came up for you? What is your takeaway? Let me know below. And if you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. And if you really want to go the extra mile and, you know, we rise together and we create this change together, share this with someone who needs to hear this, that, wow, it's actually safe for them to know what they want. And it is for you too. And when we create that clarity, that's how we manifest. Just can you get so crystal clear on what you want and keep focusing consciously on that. And that's how we move forward. I thank you for being here and I'm wishing you a very powerful day.